This is Geometry, Chapter 5, Section 1, in which we will be studying bisectors of triangles. We already know that anything that intersects a segment at its midpoint is called a bisector for that segment. It can be a point, line, another segment, a plane, a ray, any number of things. If our bisector is also perpendicular to the segment, then it has the surprising name of perpendicular bisector. And it meets both descriptions. It's perpendicular and it bisects. And we have two theorems about the perpendicular bisector that are quite useful to us. And they're converses of each other. Our first theorem, the perpendicular bisector theorem, tells us if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then that point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment that it's bisecting. 5-2 is the converse of that. If the point is equidistant from the endpoints of the bisector, or of the segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector. And the two things go together to make one big statement, but we use them separately. Okay. Now we have a picture here that's related to this idea. If I know that line M is the perpendicular bisector, then I would know WX is equal to WY. And if I knew WX, or WZ, sorry, if I knew WX was congruent to WZ, then I would know that that point W is on the perpendicular bisector for the segment. That's what the two theorems say. So in our first problem, they want us to find the length of XZ, and we're given that WX is 25.3, WY is, WZ, sorry, is also 25.3, and YZ is 22.4. Since WX is the same as WZ, that tells me line M is the perpendicular bisector, which we already have marked. So if this part is 22.4, then so is XY. So xz would be the sum of those two, 22.4 plus 22.4, or 44.8 in total. Now consider the other option. If we know m is the perpendicular bisector, then we know wx is equal to wz. Well, they tell us two values for WX and WZ, so we can say they're equal to each other. Do a little equation solving, subtract things over, and add the 15, subtract the A. Divide by 3, and we know what A is. They want us to find WX. Well, let's plug 9 back in to WX. 4 times 9 is 36, minus 15 is 21. Now there's another idea here, when we have three or more lines intersect, and when I say that I mean they all intersect at the same place, then the lines are called concurrent lines. Concurrent means they all agree on something. Okay. Now the point where all those lines intersect is called the point of concurrency. It's the point that they all match up at, they all agree, they all intersect there. And this idea is going to be useful to us in a few of the uh, different ideas we're going to have this section and, and it also through the rest of the chapter. Okay. 
since we know a triangle has three sides, logic would tell us that means it's going to have three perpendicular bisectors. Well, those three points, or those three lines, are all going to intersect somewhere. And that point of concurrency for the three perpendicular bisectors is called the circumcenter of the triangle. Okay. So what we're looking at is perpendicular bisectors meeting, and that point is called the circumcenter. And there's a theorem for that. And as it turns out, the circumcenter is equidistant from the three vertices. That is to say, it's the same distance away from all three corners of the triangle. Okay. This is an extension of theorem 5.1 or 5.2, depending on which way you want to look at it. Then we have another idea, the angle bisectors. We already know what angle bisectors are, so we didn't need to define them. But if a point is on the angle bisector, it's equidistant not from the ends of the segment, but from the sides of the angle. And remember when we measure distance from a point to a line, which is what the side of an angle is, when we measure distance there, what we're measuring is perpendicular. So this is the angle version of theorem 5.1. And then 5.5 is the angle version of 5.2, is the converse here. If the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then it's on the angle bisector. And they throw in this little bit about it being in the interior of an angle, that's not super critical because we're not going to try to trick you and give you a point outside that's equidistant. So let's find a couple of measures here. They tell us that angle BAC is 38. BC is 5, and CD is also 5. <clears throat> and our job is to find angle DAC. Since C is equidistant from the two sides, it told us that it was 5 in each direction there, 5 to BC and 5 for DC. Since that's equidistant, that means this line, AC, is an angle bisector. Well, in that case, angle DAC, this should say BAD, not BAC, first mistake I ever made. Angle DAC is half of the whole big angle, so half of 18, or half of 38 is 19. Okay. Now let's go the opposite direction. This time we know this is a bisector, so that means these two distances are equal. And those two distances are equal. Well, we know what they are, 4x plus 8 and 9x minus 7. So doing a little equation work, moving things around gets us to x equals 3. Well, they want us to find BC. We'll plug it back into BC. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 8 is 20. Okay. Now we have one more idea. Just like we had three perpendicular bisectors, we're going to have three angle bisectors. And when those three angle bisectors all intersect, then that point of concurrency is called the end center. 
Okay. And just like we had with the circumcenter, we have a theorem for the end center. In this case, what this theorem tells us is that the end center is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Remember, circumcenter was equidistant from the vertices. This is equidistant from the sides. So two big ideas is working with perpendicular bisectors and working with angle bisectors. In both cases, you get some equidistant information that makes life a lot simpler for you. And as always, if you had questions along the way, I hope you brought, wrote those down so you can bring them in, and we'll see you in class.